Every once in a while, I like to take a dive into the psychological and emotional aspects of different characters in Miraculous, which, yeah, is quite pointless because, like, they're not real people. But you know what? I find it really interesting, so we're doing it anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> see you tomorrow. Uh-huh. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, look at my stammering. So for today's video, I really wanted to take a deep dive into Gabriel Agreste, but specifically I want to talk about how he changed. How he went from a quote-unquote humble tailor to a very monstrous and villainous human. How he went from being someone Emily so easily fell for to an inhumane father who only sees his son as an object that he can use and manipulate. With all of that being said, I think it's really important that I come on here and say that despite all of the reasons he did what he did and what made him do the things that he did, that does not under any circumstances justify anything that he did. Like this video is not me trying to justify anything that he did. Yes, there are reasons why Gabriel did what he did and there are reasons why he turned out to be the way he is, but that doesn't let him off the hook. Whether he had a reason why he was doing what he was doing or not, he still did the bad thing and that's really all that matters. So I'm not trying to defend Gabriel, I'm just trying to let you understand him on a deeper level. So, fun fact, I wrote the script for this video a few weeks ago, but I completely forgot about this video until recently, and I kid you not, the day that I decided to start working on this video again, I saw a comment. Now, the video that this comment is under was deleted, unfortunately, but basically what it was saying was that Adrian is a senti, but as time is going on, he is becoming more human. And obviously, as we know, as time has been going on, Gabriel was starting to slowly lose his humanity. So essentially what they were saying is that that the correlation between these two is that because Adrian was becoming more human, that was causing Gabriel to become inhumane. And two things. First of all, this comment really did make me want to make this video even more, but also, I'm just gonna say it flat out, this theory is completely false. <laughs> and it basically all kind of comes down to the fact that they don't understand how senties work. It is not physically possible for a senti to all of a sudden slowly become more human. And so many people say this or think this in the fan and I just don't know where they got it from. A senti that is created to be a human is a human. Nothing about it is different. And I don't know how many times I have to say this. If you have a rock in your hand, the more you let it sit there, it's not gonna turn into more of a rock because it's already a freaking rock. I've said this a million times before, but I'm gonna say it again. Senti is not a different species. It's a label. And a lot of people try to make Adrian out to be like this completely new, different, weird species. And I'm like, no, he's just human. Let me just say, Adrian is just as human as he would be if he wasn't a senti. Now, the reason why I'm even bringing up this comment in this specific video is because there is a part of this theory or idea that I do agree with. I genuinely believe that Adrian being a senti does tie into Gabriel becoming inhumane, but it's not a direct correlation like the comment was trying to say. Adrian being a senti is not the problem. It's the fact that Gabriel had an unnatural control over Adrian that was the problem, which I will get into a little bit later. So just keep all of what I said in mind. Starting off, I really want to talk about Gabriel's upbringing because I think it plays a really big role in how things turned out. Gabriel, or Gaby Grissette, which was his birth name, was born to parents which we actually don't know the names of, except we, like, we know their last name is Grissette, but like other than that, we have no idea what they look like. Does he have any siblings? I don't know. Apparently, it wasn't that important or otherwise like we would have probably seen it. Anyway, what we do know about them though is that they owned a fast food restaurant and his family wasn't wealthy by any means and I genuinely feel like that's where the whole humble tailor comes from. You know, he grew up with not a lot so he probably adored every little thing that he had. In time, Gabriel found his love for fashion and he was really good at it. Like Felix explained to us in episode 24, he made pieces that brought out the souls of whoever wore it. Emily Graham de Vanilli, his future wife, on the other hand, had a very, very, very different upbringing. Her parents were a king and a queen. She was literally the heir to the throne. To say she grew up wealthy is kind of an understatement, but the thing is, Emily never cared about, like, 
any of that stuff. She just wanted to have fun and explore, which is why she eventually went to France to study abroad. Obviously there she met Gabriel and she quickly fell in love with him. Now the reason why I'm even bringing Emily up is because I think she plays one of the biggest roles in what happened. And it's not even her necessarily, it's her parents. They hated Gabriel because he didn't have any kind of status. He didn't have any money. Well, like, they had money, but, like, they weren't rich, is what I'm trying to say. He was a good person, but obviously they could not care less about that stuff. All they cared about was finding someone good for Emily to marry, which in their eyes was someone who had money and status. Like, that's all. He could literally treat her like crap, and they'd be like, oh, well, he's rich. <laughs> and there's no doubt in my mind that this didn't affect Gabriel a lot. I even think the words a lot is an understatement. Gabriel is obviously a very wealthy man now. He always has to have the best of the best. And... Like, now there's even times where he kind of looks down on people who are not as well off as him. I mean, like, in a sense, Gabriel kind of became like Emily's parents. Gabriel hates Marinette in the way that Emily's parents hated him. Which kind of brings up the question, if he had been through that situation in the past, why would he even be treating others like this? Well, for me personally, I feel like it's because her parents made him hate anybody who was like him. I don't know if you guys have seen The Greatest Showman, but I I love to compare it to Emily and Gabriel. P.T. Barnum grew up very poor, but he also had really big dreams for his life. His future wife, Charity, on the other hand, grew up very, very wealthy, and the difference between the two made her parents hate him. They thought he wasn't good enough for their daughter, all because of money and status. Disgusting. He was just a peasant, someone that existed to work for them and nothing else. But Charity didn't care about any of that. She loved him no matter what. I mean, eventually Charity ended up giving absolutely everything up just to be with him. You guys starting to see the comparison yet? But here's where the story starts to take a turn. P.T. Barnum continues to do everything to give her a good life. I think a part of him felt bad that she had given up everything for him, so he wanted to give it all back to her. But along the way, as he became more successful, it started to become more about showing her parents up. He felt the need to prove to her parents that he was something, show them that he was good enough for their daughter. But within that, he kind of lost himself and who he was originally doing all of this for. He became obsessed with the money and the status he was getting. And I think that is like the exact same thing that happened with Gabriel. He knew that her parents hated him, and so he just wanted to do whatever he could to show them up. I mean, maybe he originally wanted to gain all this money and success to try and be there for Emily and give her a good life, but then eventually it just became this like, look how cool I am, look, I'm good enough for your daughter. But then again, like also within doing that, it destroyed a lot, especially internally. I think that he slowly started turning into a bad person over time because of it. Him constantly wanting to show up her parents kind of turned into like a cocky attitude, and that's something that continued to stick with him. And so now he kind of feels that way about anybody and everybody. The more famous he got, the more power went to his head. He started to slowly become less and less of the humble tailor that Emily first fell in love with. However, I don't think that this really changed that much until after Emily died. I think Emily kind of kept him level-headed, and so when she was gone, all of that power and control just completely took over him. Moving on though, I don't think that Emily's parents are the only thing that made him become who he is today. The other thing is Adrian, and not Adrian specifically, but the fact that he's a senti. So yes, we're going back to what we talked about earlier. When Gabriel gave Colt the miraculous, one of the first things that he brought up was the fact that you could control it, which I thought was quite strange. I will lend you this magic amulet. It will allow you to give life to your dream and to control it. And like, okay, I believe that creating Adrian from the miraculous was originally like this innocent thing. They just wanted a kid. But of course, things aren't going to be that simple when that child is a senti. And you have the item that has the amok in it with you. I mean, you have a very unnatural control over them. It's not surprising that things would go south. In pretty much everybody's case, it would only be a matter of time before the power and control you have over the senti would overcome you, which is exactly the case with Gabriel. And maybe at the start, it wasn't exactly like this, but as time went on, he definitely started to see Adrian as less of a human and more of an object. Which is why I totally agree with Felix when he said that nobody should have the ability to create a senti. No one should have that kind of control over someone. Even if you're a good person and you have 
really good intentions towards a senti, there's probably going to be a point where you control it and you constantly control it to the point where the control you have over them becomes abuse. I mean, let me put it this way. If you had a child that wasn't listening to you and they were a senti, you would probably every so often use the object to control them to do what you want them to do. And then you realize, oh, well, when I control them, it's so easy. They just instantly do what I want. And so you go make them do something else. And then they refuse to do it. So you use the item and it works. And so you start doing that little by little, constantly controlling what they're doing because it makes it so easy for them to do it. Like they just instantly do it. There's no arguing. And that continues until you've basically started Started to control every single aspect of their life and maybe you don't even realize it but you do and once again I think that is exactly how it went with Gabriel he was probably rarely controlling Adrian but as time went on he started controlling him more and more and then even more because when you control Adrian he's so obedient and he does everything you want without even putting up a fight and it became a cycle that kept going on and on and on and on until he's controlled Adrian to a point where he genuinely doesn't even see him as human, let alone his own son. I mean to put it quite plainly, Adrian just became Gabriel's puppet. And of course the last one which is basically like the most obvious one is the fact that Emily died. Emily was the person that he loved more than anyone else in this world. I mean, how could it not affect him negatively? Especially because of the way that she died. Like, they genuinely could have prevented it. It wasn't, like, natural at all. It was a mistake, and they could have done things to fix it. Even before Emily died, Gabriel was already planning on finding a way to bring her back, despite her not wanting to. I think that him wanting Emily back is what really drove him crazy. It's also what allowed all of his prior craziness that he had obtained over time to finally come out. In my eyes, Gabriel already had the foundation of becoming a villain prior to Emily even dying or becoming sick. Emily dying was just like the last straw. It's what made absolutely everything come out. Oh, and also not to mention, Gabriel was using the Butterfly Miraculous for evil purposes. And I think if you use a Miraculous for evil, it will affect you negatively. It will make you go insane because that's not how Miraculous are intended to be used. There is so much power in evil and it's not good power. It will drive you insane. It will make you go crazy. It will kill you whether it's physically or emotionally. At the end of the day, I just think this whole story is very, very sad. I'm not saying I feel bad for Gabriel at all because I absolutely do not. That man deserved everything that was coming for him. But still, the circumstances that led up to those things are just really sad. And I do feel bad, especially for Adrian, because he got the bulk of that. 